Hey, you all, and good morning. Carpetbagger here, coming to you live from the West. More specifically, we are in Bill, Wyoming, a town named Bill with a population of 11 people. And uh, last night, I left, uh, left Deadwood, was just headed through Wyoming, and man, Wyoming, one of the most, uh, I think it is the most sparsely populated states, just driving past acres and acres of fields. And so I, I, I got on Priceline, was looking for a place to stop and rest the night, and I found a reasonably priced hotel here in Bill, Wyoming. But I was a little confused. They pulled up the map, and it looked like this hotel was the only thing in town, this hotel right here behind me. And um, so I was a little nervous. I'm like, is there really a hotel just out in the middle of nothing, nowhere, Wyoming? And um, so I left Deadwood, probably traveled about two and a half hours without seeing a gas station, and then stumbled upon my hotel for the evening, the Travel Lodge here in Bill, Wyoming, a very sizable hotel. I'm like, why is there this big hotel? I hadn't seen anything for about over two hours, over two hours, not much between here and, uh, and Deadwood, except for this large hotel and a 24-hour diner, Peggy's, Peggy's Diner there. So I did a little bit of research. What, what's going on here in uh, Bill, Wyoming? And I learned that Bill, Wyoming is um, apparently the Union Pacific Railroad has made it a rule that trains traveling in this area must stop and allow their crews to rest here in Bill. So it's kind of a designated resting point on the railroad. So of course they had to build a hotel here for, um, for the railroad workers to stay in and also the 24 24 hour diner there um ate there ate there last night and um yeah there was like one where you, you check in at the diner there's one person that works at the hotel in the diner and then one person that works at the diner that just makes food for anyone who uh who comes in so yeah, yeah very peaceful night's sleep here they do have some interesting things like they do have like a pacific rail uh pacific railways um Eastern, Eastern Pacific Railroad uh, rest area in there. You can only go in um, and rest in there. It's like a lounge for the employees. I can't go in there because I, mean, I don't work for a railroad. And I don't, I think, I literally think I may be the only person in this hotel that doesn't work um, for the railroad. Oh, another little interesting thing when you get in the, in the bedroom, there was like a little um, black towel next to the sink. So that was for like washing your hands and your face if there was like grease from the train so you don't stain their their white linen so very very interesting i learned i ended up learning something uh something new learning about a new town bill wyoming which was my place of rest uh last night and over across from the travel lodge we have the defunct bill wyoming post office it actually says for sale by owner, so you could actually own the old post office. I guess a old decommissioned post office here in uh, in Bill, and uh, the defunct Bill store, the Bill store. I guess this was a uh, this also a saloon as well. So a little bar here. Looks like they uh, were going out of business, and now they are out of business. So yeah, come out to Bill by the post office by the store now there is this house here this looks abandoned i don't think anyone lives there there is like a looks like a mobile home right there there's like a community center past that way but other than that that is literally all of bill i'm showing you the entirety of bill here the main the main point of interest in Bill is the Travel Lodge Hotel for the uh, railroad workers. Oh, and one interesting fact is apparently um, it was called Bill, Wyoming because there was multiple people named Bill that lived here. So they named the town Bill. Now for those of you who may not have been to the state of Wyoming, it is. It is expansive. It is unpopulated. You don't know where the next gas station is going to be. 
you don't know where hotels are going to be. There may hotels may be a little pricey because they're harder, you know, harder to find. Um, so yeah, yeah, I, I was made sure I was extra prepared here. I um, packed up the car kitchen in Rapid City, made sure I had enough food to last me on my trek through uh, Wyoming. Luckily. They did have the diner, so I was able to get some hot food last night. But um, but yeah, yeah, be prepared, be prepared. Like I said, I didn't see a gas station in the past two and a half, the two and a half hours that took me to drive here from Deadwood. So you know, fill up your tank. You know, make sure you have food. Like I said, the uh, the car kitchen's packed in case in case I wasn't able to find a restaurant traveling through Wyoming. I remember there's one time. I, I got a hotel in Wyoming and they like called me. I was like driving there and they're like, yeah, our lobby our lobby closes at eight. I'm like, oh, can I check in? Like, can you leave the key? Can you run my credit card and leave the key? And they're like, yeah, no, you, 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 you gotta be here. So yeah, it's, it's, it takes some planning, you know, when you're, when you're in this, this uh, rural of an area. Um, you know, nothing, I, I do want to point out the travel lodge was excellent. Nothing, I'm not, that, not the hotel I was talking about, but yeah, one time years ago when I was traveling through Wyoming, had some problems getting a, getting a hotel that didn't uh, close up their lobby at 8 o'clock at night. So, yeah, gonna, the, the, the plan for today is to try to make it to Salt Lake City, Utah. Um, we'll just kind of see what, where the road takes us. We got a, got a long drive today, probably about seven hours. I'm gonna try to, to put in to make it all the way to Salt Lake City, and um, so yeah, we'll see. Like I said, it's a rural place, a lot of expansive open areas, and we will have to uh, see if there, you know, what there is to see along uh, along the long, lonesome road here in Wyoming. Yeah, you can see out there the train resting while its crew rests at the Travelage and Peggy's Diner. And we have stopped off in Douglas, Wyoming, which has the honor of being the birthplace of the Jackalope. See, we are here in Centennial Jackalope Square dedicated July 10th, 1990. Yesterday actually would have been the birthday of Jackalope Square. But over here in the center of town, we have the former world's largest jackalope. It actually um, would have uh, just lost the record just a year or two ago when they built a massive wooden jackalope in Wall, South Dakota. Yes, the legendary horned rabbit the antlers up there if you look closely you can see on the statue it actually has like real whiskers there and uh the jackalope actually voted the official mythical creature of the state of wyoming so as i've traveled across the country one of the consistent roadside sites you will see at oddities museums at wacky restaurants pretty much anywhere that falls under the realm of roadside attraction, you will see jackalopes mounted on the wall. But it is actually here in Douglas, Wyoming, where the very first jackalope was mounted. There was two brothers, Douglas and Ralph Herrick. They were a, uh, two taxidermists, and they would, um, they said that they stumbled upon the idea of the jackalope in the 1930s, kind of by chance. They had just been out hunting rabbits, hunting giant jackrabbits, and they tossed the dead rabbit onto the table, and it lined up next to a pair of deer antlers. And they're like, oh, we got something here. And I think that's one thing, to me, that's one thing about the appeal of the jackalope, the antlers. It looks, it fits somehow. It looks like it could be absolutely 100% a real creature. I think a lot of people do believe jackalopes actually are a real natural living creature and because so they look like something that could exist in the wild, something fantastical yet oddly grounded at the same time. But uh, the brothers would uh, begin uh, producing thousands of jackalopes. They would, um, you know, they were responsible for starting the jackalope craze and um, they actually were the, the supplier of jackalopes for uh, wall drug 
in Wall, South Dakota. They would provide them with the jackalopes that they would sell to tourists. So yeah, I'm a huge fan of cryptids, mythical creatures, legends, and it's really cool to be here in the town, the very town where the jackalope was created. And here in Jackalope Square, you can see over the, uh, the restrooms here, we have little jackalope characters. This guy here, he looks like, uh, is he supposed to look like a little James Dean jackalope? What is he? He has a tattoo on his arm. What is it? It says volunteer? Volunteer, maybe? He loves volunteers. And uh, we have the female jackalope over here. She uh, kind of reminds me of Rosie the Riveter. And she's got the volunteer tattoo as well. You can see the public bench there has the silhouette of the jackalope on it. And speaking of antlers, look at this. The White Wolf Saloon here, completely covered in, uh, in antlers. Let's get a uh, closer look here. Yeah, you can see the different skulls and antlers lining the outside of the bar. Oh, I see some of these carvings here. Playing cards. Is this is this Wild Bill Hickok? I think. I think. Uh, I think it might be. I think this might be the uh, the dead man's game here. Unfortunately, it does look like the uh, White Wolf Saloon is not currently operational. They have it for sale here. So yeah. Come out here to Wyoming, purchase the Bill Wyoming post office, and also buy the White Wolf Saloon. This White Wolf here chugging a, chugging a bottle of liquor. Now this building here actually plays an important role in Jackalope history. This is Hotel Labonte, and uh, the first ever Jackalope that was made, the original Jackalope, the concept model of the jackalope was sold to the owner of the hotel here and it hung on the walls in this building for decades the first ever jackalope that was ever constructed hung in uh, in the lobby of uh, of this hotel unfortunately at one point someone actually stole the original jackalope probably did not even realize that um it was the they thought it was the just your average jackalope but it was actually the first jackalope ever. And so that has been lost to history. I don't know if, if, if anyone has any info, maybe we could start a, uh, we could start a campaign to try to locate the first ever jackalope, which was swiped by someone here in Douglas. If you're out there and you, and you took the jackalope or your grandfather took the jackalope, uh, let's, let's, let's get it back. Let's, uh, it, it belong, it belongs in a museum. We got here at the, Labont. Um, now nah, they're closed. I want to see if there's, if they currently have any jackalopes on uh, on the wall. No, doesn't look like they have any jackalopes hanging up, which is a shame. The first location to ever display the jackalope does not have a current jackalope. Now over here at the Railroad Museum, they have another giant jackalope. Now this one's actually bigger than the other one. So if I, if I get this straight, the one that we saw in Jackalope Square was at one point the, the world's largest jackalope. This jackalope here replaced that jackalope. And then the one in Wall Drug, the giant wooden sculpture, that uh, replaced this jackalope as the world's largest last year. This is a pretty fantastic jackalope here. It's interesting, a little different interpretation. He actually has the antelope horns, even though they are called uh, jackalope. The, they usually have deer antlers, but this one has those antelope horns. That looks like an old train depot here. It looks like we give our, uh, give our ticket here to the jackalope conductor. Have some different uh, train items in here, but uh, look there on top. 
over the conductor's hat. The old jackal up there, the blue bandana. Over here, there's a big plushy jackal up there wearing a train hat. Oh yeah, and up there, that is a that's a regular antelope, you know, close relative of uh, of the jackalope, the antelope. And yes, I love how the uh, tree museum is just just full of jackalopes. Wouldn't expect anything else. A little fiberglass jackalope here. He's got different designs on him, flowers. Got the American flag on his back. And look at that on his cheek. On his cheek he has an antelope. Oh, look down here. We got a <laughs> old jackalope in, uh, in a cage there with straw. I guess that's how you keep your uh, keep your jackalope. Here's the jackalope junction gift shop. Oh yeah, I can see different jackalopes hanging up there. You can buy some cuddly cuddly jackalopes. Got the railroad museum shirts there. These are sweatshirts. It is 100 degrees outside. I could not wear that right now. There is a uh, building block jackalope. It's the field guide to the North American jackalope. All the information you need on the uh, jackalope species. Oh, there's two bucks clashing. Okay, so you get Lucky Jackalope feet. These are $5 a piece. And then, uh, they're not so Lucky Jackalope mounts. There's a uh, $200. That's actually, you know what? That's actually like a really good price for a Jackalope. Well, I do have one. I do have one at home. And here at the Railroad Museum, we do have a very impressive collection of trains see the engine there and then this is this is a fairmont motor car this is a car you can see actually designed to drive on those train tracks you gotta be really careful you gotta you know gotta have some knowledge about what trains are coming this must be a dining car here because we see the uh the jackalope waitress there bringing us our food Yeah, this is really cool. They have it open here, so you can uh, take a look at the dining car. Oh yeah, this would have been very luxurious at uh, one point in time. It's just like a little bar area here. Oh, probably like a wait station. And there's uh, two uh, two donkeys licking each other. kitchen here. It'd be cramped quarters cooking in this kitchen. And, you know, it's dark cramped. Probably always moving considering it's on a train track. Let's peek in this train here. Oh, is this like a... Okay, this is like a sleeping a sleeping car. It's a very tiny bed. You wedge yourself into these little sleeping areas. Oh, there's the toilet. Yeah, I do want to try going on a uh, train trip at uh, at some point. Yeah, the little tiny little rooms here. These are the fancier rooms in here. We actually got a room, and you got the bed there. You got the sink, and look at this. I don't know if I've ever seen this before. The toilet actually pulls down, a retractable toilet pulls down from underneath the sink. Here's a stock car. Just imagine that being full of hobos. There's a few more train cars back here behind the jackalope inside this yellow car here. 
Okay, this would be like your standard passenger car here. This is really cool though. Love the upholstery. Love the uh, chandeliers. The old timey suitcases up here on the luggage rack. And then we'll look here inside the caboose. Oh, look at this, this wooden caboose. I guess the caboose is kind of where the crew hangs out. Now they hang out at the uh, Travel Lodge in Bill, Wyoming. <laughs> but before that, you know, they'd hang out in, uh, in the caboose. While in the train museum, we got the classic Douglas, Wyoming souvenir. These are free, actually, but this is a jackalope catching license. I think they used to call them jackalope hunting license. Maybe they thought this was a little less violent, but yeah, you get this issued to you. And it gives you the right to catch one, it says one pronghorn jackalope within the lawful boundaries of Converse County, Wyoming on June 31st. Well, that's an issue because June 31st doesn't exist. I'm starting to think this, there might be a little bit of flim flam. <laughs> flim flam mixed in here. It says if you fail, fail to follow the rules, you get a fine of $13. But I said it's a 13 months of rigorous recreation in Douglas, Wyoming. You get sentenced to recreation. And on the back, a bunch of information about, uh, about the jackalope. And also, I was excited about this. They have free pins. So I think I will add this. I think I'll go ahead and just add this to my hat. A, a free jackalope pin. So yeah, they, uh, here in Douglas, they know how to take care of a tourist and there we go the newest pin added uh, to the hat there all right and as we are leaving Douglas Wyoming if you look up at the hilltops you will see a jackalope looking over us all stopped off in Casper, Wyoming, and I noticed over here at Samford's, they had these absolutely massive Looney Tunes characters. There's Daffy Duck there. We have a giant Bugs Bunny as well. Where the heck, where the heck did these uh, giant Looney Tunes characters come from? And the building itself is almost a gas station like uh, look to it. You see the cars being serviced over here. Oh, look at this. We got a truck buried in the ground. Oh, yeah, there's like some old beat up cars back here alongside, alongside the restaurant. Interesting. This one over here looks like it's been here a while. It's got an entire tree growing through the vehicle. Oh yeah, over here, back behind the restaurant, there's another row of palm trees and junk cars. The Sinclair sign, along with some random dinosaur parts. Like some sort of giant shark over here. Velociraptor. I guess this is their logo here. I guess this is Samford, this uh, drunken guy here eating burgers. Yeah, this place looks like a lot of fun. Some more dinosaurs back here. Oh, look at this. Got all these alligators here. Yeah, this place looks fun. Let's uh, let's grab some food here. Head in here. Oh, look at this. The uh, doorknobs are gas bumps. A lot of crazy things inside as well. This attendant here says, please wait to be seated. Yeah, just look at this here above the bar there. You've got those flashing, those flashing Sputnik ornaments. There's a black bear up there and a bunch of Betty boobs. 
And just look up at the ceiling here. There's all sorts of planes. And these are all different like parachutes down here. This place is pretty crazy. Got Scrooge McDuck there. There's a uh, pirate dangling from the ceiling. And then we have a red, white, and blue cow over here. Or should I say red, white, and moo. Yeah, this menu is absolutely massive. I don't even know where to uh, where to begin here. Yeah, just so many things to choose from. Jeez. All right, I think I'm gonna try the who dat down yonder steak. I guess it's a uh, Cajun themed uh, steak there. Now my side salad showed up, and this is. An enormous why why is it so big yeah is it just me or is this a is this a really big salad here okay I don't know what I was expecting but look what just got brought out to me this is the skillet with the steak in it it's got shrimp and like Cajun sauce on it, there's fried green beans, um, a whole skillet of, uh, of baked beans there, and some bread shaped like a heart, and even some even some like little chocolate caramel candies. This is a incredible spread here. Let's try some of the steak and cream sauce and shrimp there. That's really good. Oh yeah, it's so creamy. It's got like peppers and onions. Mm. It's very hot because it's in the skillet. The green beans. Oh, that's good. The beans there, the bacon. And then I guess we wash it down with the uh, with the piece of candy there. The black, it's the black cow. I don't know if I've ever had black cow candy before. I don't know why this was on my plate. <laughs> so yeah, I didn't know what I was getting into when I when I went in here. Um, so we are nowhere near clean plate club status. I finished the steak and shrimp, which is super good, and all in this like creamy Cajun sauce. Um, the steak was really tender. And delicious as well but yeah I, I can't consume all of this today I'm just so I'm gonna have to admit defeat um, today we are not in the clean plate club so yeah super fun place with some very uh, interesting food here at uh, Sanford's now there is a fossil museum here but uh, we have arrived uh, past closing so we won't be able to look at any fossils today but they do have this amazing statue here this is called essence of rex you can see that amazing t-rex uh, statue there a lot more realistic than the ones we saw at uh, rapid city but uh, the cool thing about this is on this side you have the fleshy t-rex and then as you move over to the other side, you see the skeleton version of, uh, of the T-Rex there. So really, really cool statue here. Here is the National Nine Inn Showboat. This is a hotel shaped like a riverboat. Of course, uh, not too long ago, I was on my Mississippi river road trip and uh, saw a lot of river boats on that trip but did not expect to see a river boat or a river boat shaped building here in Wyoming now there is a river right over there the North Platte River so it is it is technically on the river here and um, I would I would have stayed here and uh, spent the night here in the river boat shaped hotel but uh, I really do need to make some time tonight and try to get to uh, Salt Lake City
We're over here at the Casper Welcome Center and Scenic Overlook. And definitely a beautiful overlook here of the uh, city of Casper, Wyoming. But uh, let's invoke the EM rule and uh, head inside. So this is the Casper Welcome Center, but also the National Historic Trails Interpretive Center. Oh wow, this is actually really cool in here. This is Footsteps to the West. They have like a uh, theater in here. It's kind of like a combination wax museum theater. They have an interactive show with different lighting and effects. Oh, yeah, you can see over here, they're talking about this uh, grave. See the mourners there planting a body in the ground. Wow. Yeah, you can see the uh, wagon train here. Wagon there being pulled by these ox. Yeah, this is a great display here. There's a woman there riding next to the campfire. Yeah, you can see the trapper there overlooking the cliff. Guy over here repairing the wagon wheel. Although you better be careful, there's a coyote slurking back there. See the men and their donkey up there. Today. Well, one man returning says he can't go all the way. Loves his wife more than gold. For miles, an animated mash for us to eat. Our women and children cry for food. See exhibit here on the buffalo. Talks about the Pony Express here. It says every uh, Pony Express rider was given a gun to keep them safe and a Bible to keep them moral. You see the Pony Express saddle there with all the different bags. And as fun as it would be, they do not want us to sit on this horse. Well, there's a simulator that you can ride a wagon across a river. See how it rocks with the waves. All right, let's board the wagon here. Have a sit on one of these, seat on one of these barrels. Everybody ready in there? Okay, here right. we go. Let's move them out. Going across the river. Oh, here we go. You can see the, see how bumpy it is here. In the wagon as we get across the river. Oh, goodness. oh geez. Oh, yeah, we're not even, we're not even in the, not even in the river yet. Just stay down. No matter what happens, don't stand up. Don't stand up, okay. Oh, jeez. Okay, here we are. In the water. In the water. Oh, man. Three wagons. So terrifying. Oh yeah, look how deep, how deep we are. All right, I think, I think we're gonna make it. Oh man, this is treacherous. Listen, no matter what happens, just sit still. There we go. Almost, almost across the other side. Oh gosh. And now we have to like get up on this hill. It's treacherous. It's treacherous territory here. Oh man, the river was easy compared to this. You can go out this door and take a peek at the overlook. You know, like I said earlier today, Wyoming, one of the most uh, 
empty states. One of the most sparsely populated, but man, is it beautiful. So the National Historic Trails Interpretive Center, which is actually surprisingly uh, well done. I, I really loved the uh, the show with the figures and the uh, cross the, crossing the river in a wagon simulator. They did a, they did a good job with this. But I do believe it is once again time to get back on that long, lonesome road. Passing through Rollins, Wyoming, and I had to pull over when I saw this giant red fiberglass sumo wrestler. Huh. Interesting. We have successfully made it to Salt Lake City, Utah. Wyoming is a beautiful state. A lot of, uh, like a lot of open areas. And, you know, it's beautiful to drive through, but it does take, it does take a while. You drive from like Rapid City, South Dakota to Salt Lake City. It's a good eight hour drive there. And, you know, just, just like a few small towns in between. No like giant cities. It's a very rural part of uh, this great country of ours. But um, got some plans for tomorrow. And of course, we're going to keep moving west. They're going to spend tomorrow in Salt Lake City and then going to move westward after that. Our end goal is to make it to the California State Fair before heading back east. But uh, thank everyone who uh, has come along with me on this journey, riding here in my passenger seat with me on um, this grand journey. Um, if you guys like these videos, please subscribe. I travel around the country. I film roadside attractions, amusement parks, museums, haunted houses, and other fun, random stuff. If uh, you would like to uh, help support the channel in uh, other ways, consider contributing to Patreon, $3 or more. Get you a postcard once a month from me to you. Also selling enamel pins in the Etsy shop and doing personalized messages on Cameo. All that information is in the description of this video and all that helps keep this train on the track, this boat in the water, and this dirigible in the air. Until next time my friends, this one's in the bag.